One of the scariest things for new injectors and also for new patients is eyelidtosis because most injectors start with botulinum toxin and the worst side effect you can probably get from it is eyelid drooping. Now before you rush into treating an eyelidtosis, make sure you've got the diagnosis correct because it is very common to see a brow ptosis as an eyelidtosis. And this happens when the skin from the forehead essentially has a connection with the eyelid. So as the brow feels heavier, it affects the eyelid. It looks like the eyelid is drooping, but if you look closely, it's actually the forehead skin above the eyelid. What we're really concerned about is when the eyelid itself is drooping. It is when the muscle called the levator palpebrae muscle has had some botulinum toxin affecting it, not when the frontalis muscle has been affected. So the first port of call for most injectors, if you do have an eyelidtosis, is to use a sympathomimetic eye drop. Now these sympathomimetics, what that means is you are simulating the effect of the sympathetic nervous system, which makes your eyes dilate. If you, give a, if you have a big fright, your eyes dilate, and these drops have something very similar to adrenaline that stimulates those receptors and makes the eyelids open. The only problem is it only lasts three to four hours. So you have to reapply these drops regularly to enable the eyelid to lift. And it's only a small contribution to lifting. It doesn't actually treat the bigger, more powerful levator pulpary muscle. It is only the tarsal muscle in the eyelid that is made of smooth muscle, which is a contributor, but not the main muscle that lifts the eyelid. I know a lot of people will watch this video if they have a pre-existing eyelidtosis, in which case I wouldn't recommend using eyelid drops like these because you're having to apply a medication essentially for the rest of your life that is going to affect your eye in other ways too. It's way better if you're very concerned about it to consider a surgical solution rather than regular eye drops for decades that aren't actually licensed for this purpose. So if you have had an eyelidtosis, you should go back to the injector who injected you and ask them for support. The next treatment option might surprise you, and that is that you can actually use more botulinum toxin to get the droopy eyelid to lift. It's actually quite simple when you think about what controls the eyelid. You have muscles that close the eye, the protractors, and you have muscles that pull the eyelid open, the retractors. What's happened when you have the side effect from botulinum toxin is that you've affected the retractor muscle, the levator palpebrae muscle. Instead of treating that with more, which would make the eyelid ptosis worse, we simply treat the protractors. And the protractor in your eye is the more palpable part of your eyelid muscle, the orbicularis oculi muscle. So it's an injection just here near the rim of the eyelid. Now, it's important to remember that there's also a potential side effect from this, which is that you may not be able to close your eye properly. Like in so many things in life, there's a potential downside with every intervention. And it's also why it may not be something that you do if the eyelid ptosis is mild. Keep things simple whenever you can. So this could be an option if you have pre-existing eyelid ptosis. A very low dose as part of another treatment might give you a bit more symmetry. But it's one of those things you'd have to test over time, start with a small dose and see if it makes you symmetrical and doesn't cause any of the side effects. The next option as an intervention is surgery. Now this is definitely not the kind of step you'd be considering if you simply have a side effect from botulinum toxin, because even if you do nothing, it will fully recover with time. If you have a pre-existing ptosis that's severe enough, surgery can be an appropriate answer. Now this isn't the same as a blepharoplasty. It is done by an oculoplastic surgeon when they operate actually within the orbit of the eye. Very different thing to the cosmetic procedures that you may see more often. And it is for patients, usually you've got a functional problem. They're actually having difficulty seeing. Then you can do this operation and it is very effective. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can ring that notification bell and make sure you see more videos like this in the future.